Today, we're making a cranberry traditional mead and something else. Let's get started. All right, so I've made a ton of mead. I'm like logging almost, uh, almost 200 meads at this point. I'm in the 190s now. So today we're making a cranberry honey traditional mead. And because I love to do something a little different with new honeys, I love to make a traditional and a recipe, you're gonna see a different recipe. So let me show you both the recipes on the screen right now. Both of them utilizing cranberry blossom honey. Um, so the first one is the traditional, super simple, three pounds of cranberry blossom honey. We're only using two and a half in the primary. We'll use five or 0.5 or a half pound in the back sweetening stage. Um, I'm using water up to a gallon, some, uh, what is it called? Lauvin QA23 yeast, which is a good wine slash mead yeast. Some Go Firm which is right here. This is to help rehydrate the yeast. It's like pre-workout for them. They love it. And I'm gonna use some Fermade O, which is an organic yeast nutrient. So that's the traditional one. You'll kind of see that progression as we go. The other recipe is a little bit different. It is going to be a pineapple. Um, it's gonna be a pineapple and hibiscus which is a little weird and then of course our cranberry blossom honey um we are going to use the same things lava and qa23 i'm using go firm and fermate o in this um this recipe should be kind of interesting i'll probably keep the same ratio of honey so two and a half pounds in the primary back sweetening with half a pound what does cranberry blossom honey taste like you might ask Ooh, it's very bright it definitely has a little bit of tartness to it. Cranberry generally is kind of tart. So it has a little bit of that tartness. It's got a really nice, um, interesting like character in that it flows, like it's sweet and tart and sweet and tart, but it has high floral notes to it. I'm excited for this one. Okay, enough talking. I've made so much mead. Let me just do it. Um, here are the steps on the screen on how to make a mead. If you're watching for the first time, most of you probably have made a mead before. So I'm going to mix up both the traditional recipe and the weird one we're doing. All right, I have mixed it all together. Here's the traditional. It's in a carboy because I don't, I'm not using any fruit or anything, so that's not worrying about space. Um, this one is the pineapple and hibiscus, and the the tea portion of the hibiscus, honestly, I just looked up how much for two cups of tea, how much hibiscus, and it was like 1.25 grams per cup of tea. So this was actually a little over. This was about four ounces of hibiscus, or excuse me, four ounces, four grams of hibiscus steeped in hot water for 10 minutes. So this should be fine. Three pounds of pineapples, frozen. Now my little cheat here, and I hope I didn't kill the yeast, um, I tried to let them thaw out. I used hot water, so hopefully it would equal out. Now our next step, I gotta fly in here. How annoying. Our next step is going to be to let these ferment. Is this a tried and true recipe? No, uh, this is just an experiment. I think it might work, I don't know. Pineapple, cranberry, blossom honey, and hibiscus could be a total failure, but we're gonna try it. So don't start screaming at me, you will, what a stupid. Get over it. Um, I'm very curious to see how both of these go. I did rehydrate my yeast and go firm in water, so we're gonna let it start fermenting. After they both finish fermenting, we'll come back. This is in a bucket because it needed some headspace with fruit and things, so yeah. Let's go ahead and let this ferment. I'll be back soon. Here we go. All right, so surprisingly, the traditional is not done yet, but the pineapple cranberry hibiscus version is. It's been two weeks. Other one's still kind of going. It's right here, right in front of my face. Still fermenting, slash degassing, doing its thing. We're gonna go ahead and taste test this one first. So here is, again, hibiscus, cranberry, blossom honey, and pineapple. This is like super reminiscent for me of, uh, I've had a lot of tapache recently, so it's got tapache vibes. The hibiscus is adding some extra brightness to it. Honestly, it's, it is um, 
not like meadow foam honey, but it's got some of the same elements. I think it's pretty good. The pineapple's not the most strong thing in the world, but I think with some sweetness, it'll bring forward that fruity flavor. So here's what I'm gonna do. First of all, this is what it looks like. The pineapple chunks have been used pretty well, so they're dead. We're gonna go ahead and move this off. We could let it set for another week or two, but we're just gonna go ahead and move it out into this sanitized glass carboy, and then we'll talk. All right, so we moved it over. I wanna give a slight disclaimer. If you just finished it, if you just finished fermenting a mead, uh, I haven't even drank anything today. That was fun. Uh, if you finished fermenting, try not to drink a lot because the yeast are still kind of act, not active, but they're still involved in here. And yeast in your gut are not necessarily friends. So just be understanding of that. I poured a little bit into this glass. That does not mean that I'm going to be drinking it all by any means. So now we take our hydrometer. Let's go ahead and get a gravity reading just to check. Oh, we're dry. About 0.998 dry. That's pretty, pretty dry. Um, and it tastes like it. Again, we're getting super dry notes, but the hibiscus and pineapple are very interesting and cranberry blossom. This is what we got. Kind of see, we got some junk at the bottom. We're not keeping this. We'll toss all of that. We're gonna stick an airlock onto this, let it do its degassing thing, and we'll probably come back whenever this one's ready and hit both of them. And we're back. I went ahead and bottled these guys because I wanted to, and I didn't show the bottling process, but essentially you take and you fill each bottle with a auto siphon bottling wand and tubing. You put caps or corks on top of each and you're done. It's pretty simple. So I didn't show that. There are other videos on the channel on how to bottle your meads or whatever. So go check those out. On my right, this is a not quite full bottle um, because I didn't have enough to fill this one up, so I'm using it as my sampler. This is the pineapple and hibiscus version. And right here is the traditional. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open these up and get some pours on them. All right, so first of all, you can see the colors on them are really nice. I quite enjoy that. They are very Similar, surprisingly, almost the same color. This one on my right hand, which is the uh, the pineapple and hibiscus, is a shade darker. This traditional is, a, is lighter, but the clarity on these are amazing. And I know some of you watch my videos, and I previously said clarity doesn't really matter. And in some ways, it doesn't with home brewing. Dang, these look good. I would, I mean, I feel very comfortable giving these to people for clarity alone. But let's talk about how they taste now. So I feel like it's only fair to start with the traditional as the base. So here's what the traditional tastes like. Smell first. It does have like a, a little bit of like a cherry kind of tartness to it. I mean, I'm not gonna say cranberry because it's not exactly, but it does have a tartness on the nose. The floral is not as like bright and sweet, it's more it's got a little sweetness, but more, uh, I mean, tart. I mean, I don't know what other word to use. A little bit of hint of alcohol, but that's okay. Um, we are at about 8.4-ish percent on this traditional. Let's taste it now. Oh yeah, really, really tannic. The honey warmth came in like later. Like you get hit with a pretty sharp note of honey flavor. Yeah, it starts really sharp and kind of, I mean, it's got some acidity to this thing. I don't know what the pH is on it, but it's got a little acidity that's noticeable. And then it kind of warms out. It morphs into this more sweet, or sorry, more warm kind of uh, feeling. I think that's pretty good. It does need age. I think that's one notable thing about this is it is uh, 
got a little heat to it and I think that the that that will help. I also think just time will meld the honey character in general. I did, I do want to note that I added to help this um, try and clear up. I'm a big fan of using wine tannin, powdered wine tannin. Now I noticed this needed a little bit of a kick when it comes to uh, body boosting. So wine tannin helps build that body and it helps clear it up. I can show you a picture before and after and then what we have now, the wine tannin added more body to it and cleared this thing straight up. This just needs some time. I think it's pretty good. The sweetness level is nice. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. Now, let's flip to the other side. One little uh, interesting fact about this pineapple and hibiscus, this never had problems clearing. Um, I never had to do anything for, for clearing it and it just kind of resolved itself, really. I found that to be very, very interesting. Um, let's smell it. Ooh, that is very bright. There's a ton of pineapple. Man, I'm surprised how well that those pineapples worked. Those chunks. Ton, a ton of pineapple smell. There is hibiscus too. There's some honey warmth or like. I don't know, I feel, it's partially the alcohol, but I can feel the like warmth on my throat. Yeah, there's a lot of brightness. That's way, I mean, it's got some tartness, but this is bright and more sweet. Here we go. Mm. Now I intentionally kept this one not as sweet. So I kind of teetered around whether or not to take and I mean, back sweeten the heck uh, to make it super, super sweet. I didn't know if that's what I wanted to do. And so I back sweetened with that eight ounces and it only brought it up, I mean, a little bit, but I do like where this is at. It's a little bit drier and, but it allows you to pronounce some of the pineapple notes, still get honey character and the hibiscus is popping too. There's a lot of, this one's, the body's a little different of the two. Um, the body on this one is more, uh, it's got more juicy, it's more washy. I do think the, surprisingly, the contrast and the, the complimenting that the pineapple and hibiscus have with each other is really nice. I did not, when I created this recipe, I was a little bit worried that, that they would be overpowering and one would just trump the other. And I think they're working well. And this cranberry honey added another layer of difficulty in that suddenly we have tartness from there as well. So we had tart, tart, and then hibiscus can be tart as well. This one does feel a little bit smoother, surprisingly, than the traditional. It did ferment faster, it cleared up faster, so that could be part of it. Both of these recipes are really good and I, I think the traditional by itself stands alone as su something that's super awesome. And then also the, uh, pineapple and hibiscus and cranberry honey also works well. I'll put both recipes up. Essentially, get a, a hold of some cranberry blossom honey if you can and um, make, I mean, make a mead with it. I think getting as much time in uh, making and using various kinds of honey will only make you a better mead maker because one day in the future, whenever you make something, if you have experience with a bunch of different kinds of honey, what you'll be able to say is, oh, hey, I have this thing that's like, you know, a little too sweet, needs something that's kind of tart. Maybe cranberry blossom honey would add some tartness in here, or, you know, maybe this combination of ingredients works well. The point is, you won't really know how well this works until you do it yourself. You can trust me, and I hope you do, because I've made a lot of brews, but going out and making these things for yourself is going to be the thing that helps you understand the most about mead making. So I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed getting to do this. Um, this is one of a bunch of traditionals I've made and I'm uh, eventually I'm going to take all of my traditionals and have a battle of sorts to see which kind of honey works the best. But until that day, um, I will continue to make traditionals and other recipes. I've got other meads in the bank and I hope you're excited for those. Please hit subscribe and like. Leave a comment, what do you think about this? Have you tried cranberry blossom honey? Maybe you have, 
maybe you haven't. Regardless, I hope you ha enjoyed this episode and have a great day. Cheers.